Good morning, afternoon, evening, everybody. My name is Mike at Filmboy24. Today, mm-hmm, that's right, I got a 514, a Canon 514 XL, and some really, really old Tri-X 7278. That's right, I finally took the plunge. I held out for as long as I could because I'm not a hype guy. I don't like to follow the hype. And all the hype in the Super 8 world are these little Canon 514XL movie cameras. They're very, very simple cameras, yet they're said to have beautiful optics. Now I have a bunch of Canon Super 8 cameras. I have the 814s and the 1014s. And I actually have the 514 XLFs. I have a few of those, actually, three or four, but they all have their little quirks. Never had the, uh, the standard XL version, which is uh, XL short for existing light. It has a very fast 1.4, F1.4 lens. Uh, so I, just, I decided to take the plunge, and what I did was, I didn't do what probably a lot of people do, is watch and wait for one to show up on eBay for sub $400. I waited one, I waited for one to show up for sub $100 and hope, just hope that I got one that would work. So I did that and I actually picked up this camera fairly recently and it works beautifully, beautifully. And not only does it work beautifully, but it's in excellent cosmetic condition. I would personally grade this a nine and a half cosmetically out of 10. And I got it for $60. Anyway, uh, that's all. I'll just leave that there. So I wanted to sort of give my review on the camera and go over very quickly some of the features. It's a, it's a very popular camera, but it does lack some of the features that I truly enjoy in Super 8 cameras. You see, if you want to delve into the professional side of Super 8, or semi-professional side of Super 8, you really need to be dabbling in the 24 frames per second and the manual exposure control. This doesn't do either. However, for that price, I couldn't pass it up and I need a really good, sharp run and gun camera. So let's delve into it. First and foremost, it sports the C8 lens, the F1.4. It's a five to one ratio zoom lens or nine to 45 millimeter. It also has the macro function at the top and bottom end of the zoom feature. And that's for getting really close to your subjects where your actual focus is done with the zoom ring or the zoom lever. It has shooting speeds of nine frames per second, 18 frames per second, and single frame. You see nine frames per second, half of the normal shooting speed. Super 8 really was supposed to be shot and projected at 18 frames per second. They added nine frames per second to this, like they do a lot of them, for fast motion. Because when you shoot it at nine and project it at 18, it's double the speed. So it's kind of a quirky, fun little uh, special effect. This is something you don't find in a lot of these little Super 8 cameras. It has a self timer. This little button or dial here on the side, you set it, hit the button in the center, run over there really quick, get in front of the camera, kind of like the SLRs. Uh, and it waits 10 seconds, and then it shoots 10 seconds of film, or roughly 10 seconds of film. That's kind of a neat feature, actually. It was intended for families that wanted to get into their video together, and uh, anyway. It's a neat feature if you're into that sort of thing. Now, I said earlier, it doesn't have manual exposure, but it has something that's similar. It's called the e electronic exposure lock here. You see, this, this camera does all of its exposuring and metering automatically. So when you look through the viewfinder, there's a little dial at the top left-hand corner of your viewfinder, and the, the camera exposes your film based on the notches uh, where it sees fit. What you can do is you can point it to a bright light or to a dark area, and you can look through and you can see your little meter moving, and when you find the exposure that you like, you simply rotate this down and you hold it. It's tricky, but you hold it while you film, and it locks in that particular exposure that you got whenever you pointed your camera. It was intended for when a subject was in front of a bright light, because as we all know, when you film a subject in front of a bright light, 
if you don't over light the front of your subject or use some kind of a backlight compensation, then your subject is going to be really, really dark. And if that's the look you're going for, great. But if it's not, you use something like this. It has your standard on off switch and your single frame control here. Whoa, whoa. Settle down. When you flip this switch to single frame, it overrides any of your frame rate over here, either your 9 or your 18. So when you pull the trigger, you get one frame every time you pull the trigger. Flip it back to on, and your little frames per second dial over here becomes active. That's 18 frames per second. That's 9 frames per second. It has a footage counter, which is standard on pretty much every Super 8 camera you'll ever find. And next to it, it has a little battery check button right here. Now, the button is flat. It's flush with the camera, so you got to kind of fingernail it. But when you push it and look through, if the red light at the top of the viewfinder inside lights up, you know you got good batteries. It also has a diopter adjustment for people like me with terrible vision. You can unscrew the inner dial, and then you rotate the viewfinder or view eyepiece here, and then you tighten the little inner ring here, and it compensates for your poor vision. It also has the standard 85 filter switch. This engages your 85 filter. If you leave it on the little light bulb, the filter is disengaged. If you switch it to the sun, it's now engaged. In other words, it throws the little 85 filter right there behind your lens. That was for if you're shooting tungsten-based film outdoors so that your film doesn't turn out all blue. The last couple of things this little guy sports is a handy-dandy little fold-down handle. So my one complaint about these types of Canon cameras is they have very weak little handles. It, it's like the body, it's like a orange on a matchstick, if that makes any sense. I always felt like the handles just couldn't support the, the cameras themselves. And my 814 electronic was the perfect example. It really feels very flimsy. This one's a little more solid. It is plastic, but it's a little more solid. And the camera's not nearly as big and heavy as the other Canons, so, so not a big issue. It also has the standard quarter 20 socket for a tripod on the bottom, camera strap. Now inside, this is for silent film only. In other words, it doesn't have the sound head down here at the bottom. This, if this were a sound camera like the 514 XLS, this would be extended down farther for the longer carts and your sound head would be down at the bottom. It uses two, count it, two AA batteries. These batteries not only operate the mechanism or the motor for the film transport, they also operate the light meter. The last thing I should mention is that the pins in the camera that identify your film's ASA or ISO are meant to auto expose for the following. 40, 160, and 250 in the tungsten series. 25, 100, and 160 in the daylight series film. Basically what that means is this camera was originally designed to shoot K40 or the Kodachrome 2 25 ASA film or the Ektachrome 160 film. That's really what this was designed to shoot. In today's world, this camera would do just fine with your 50D and your 200T vision stocks. Probably wouldn't do so well with your 500T. You may have to get used to using your electronic exposure lock. It would also do fine with your uh, Ektachrome 100D. Uh, and, and films like this, older films like your Tri-X, it would meter your Tri-X just fine to 200 ASA. So you could do uh, your 7266, the modern day black and white film in here. With that, let me show you what I did with my very first roll of film in this camera, because I think nothing says test out a brand new camera than using, settle down, 45 year old film. <laughs> now. Let me preface by saying this was a brand new roll still. It was sealed in this box right here. In fact, it was sealed in this white foil, which you don't see anymore. And it was 
not really that common. Uh, and it had the original paperwork for the 7278 Tri-X film. This film is old. They introduced this particular film, I believe, in the 50s. Uh, this roll itself, it's here, it's already been processed. This roll, I checked the edge code after I processed it. One second. It's a plus and a triangle. You know what that means? It means this particular roll of film was manufactured in 1973. And that's per Kodak's own website, which puts that at almost 50 years old. So I figure what better way to test out your, your camera than with a 50 year old roll of film. Well, I know, and you settled down, and you guys probably know too, uh, black and white film stock really holds up well over the years. I didn't know if it was gonna hold up that well, but I'm gonna let you be the judge. My girls, my two daughters, and my wife and I went to the front yard and cleaned off the end of the driveway and they brought out their sidewalk chalk and I took this out there with me. Probably should have used a vision stock, my 200T or 50D because there was a lot of colored chalk, but I didn't, it's okay. Let me show you what I got on our little outdoor adventure. Here it is. <laughs> And there you have it. Yeah, it's, it's not perfect. I processed all my own film. This particular roll was done in HC-110B for eight minutes at 67 and a half degrees Fahrenheit. It's a little grainy, a little grainier than usual. And, and we know that when you process a reversal film as a negative, you have to overexpose it a tad 
or you really need to push process it a little bit. I did push it a little. I usually develop this stuff at about seven minutes. Uh, it's a little bit bright. So you get a little more grain when you process it as a negative. I'm okay with that. I don't mind the grain. I'm a grain guy. Grain guy 24. Uh, if you like videos like this, I want you to do me a huge favor. And where is it? Oh, it's right here. You know what to do. Tap the like button for me. Uh, right here. Right here. See this picture? How about consider subscribing for me? It takes a ton of work to create these goofy videos. I know it doesn't seem like it because they are so silly. I have a ball doing it. Uh, I shoot, process, scan, and deliver all of my own movie film, and I have a blast doing it. And until the very next time that I see you and the rest of you, yeah, I'll see all of you on the very next go-around.